lowermost lumbar vertebra in the sacrum touching the ground. Okay, now you may want to put your hand on your tummy muscle to make sure that the front muscle, the rectus abdominis, is not working to do this movement. And again, do it focusing on letting the rectus abdominis stay soft. So you're pushing your knees or your shin bones out over your feet to initiate the movement. And immediately the tailbone rises that L5 junction falls toward the table initially and then continue lifting vertebra by vertebra moderate monitoring the stomach to make sure it stays soft you're using something much deeper to do this work When you're up at the top, slowly lower them again, starting with the uppermost. Now what you'll notice is, even without thinking about it or trying, you are lengthening your spinal column. Now with both hands at your sides again. We're going to practice a, an arm motion. So we'll start with the left arm, reaching, sliding your left hand down the table toward your feet and letting your shoulder blade slide too. And now move the elbow out two inches, back in two inches, we want no rotation in the upper arm bone. Out two inches and rest there. And now the right arm. It's always out two inches, in two inches, and out two inches. And then resting there. Your back muscles should be able to stay relaxed during all this. And now once again, pressing your feet on the table, the pressure will tend to be more toward the knuckle of the big toe. Move your knees out over your feet, letting the tailbone rise first, and then the sacrum. That's it and then lifting the lumbar vertebra one at a time. Once again, possibly lifting all the way up to the second from lowermost thoracic vertebra. Also observe if you're tightening your pelvic floor or the upper thigh muscles. And once you're up at the top, do that elbow movement with the left arm first, sliding it down the table, moving the elbow out and in and out and rest. And the right elbow, that's it, reaching down, out in, and out. And now lengthen the head and the neck out of that very same vertebra that's on the ground and rest. And now slowly lower top vertebra first all the way down.
So now we're going to do rocking alternate hips. And we start with the assumption that you do a nice smooth pelvic lift first. And the pelvic lift is done by pressing both feet on the ground and moving both knees out over the feet. But now you're going to press the left foot on the ground and you'll probably feel the right side of the sacrum approach the ground and eventually the right side of your hip a little bit on the ground. And your left side will be raising slightly. And then release that motion. And you'll settle back to balance on the table or on the ground. Press again and feel that sense of lifting on the left side and dropping on the right. You might notice that your lower back even drops further into the table on the right. And then rest that. And now pressing the right foot, moving the right knee out over the right foot. And see if you get the same motion but reversed. and then release it. There's always a possibility that one side is going to be harder to control than the other. So just practice it. Focus on getting the side that's harder to match the side that's the easier. And this time as you relax the pressure on the right foot, I want you to go to pressing on the left foot. That's right. And now as you release the pressure on the left, press onto the right. Good. And this alternating rolling of the hips dropping backward of the waist, keep going, is an essential ingredient in walking and running. You can walk and run without it, but you keep your back and hips healthy by running with it. Or by walking with it. Feel the way that your two hips roll one forward, one back, the waist rolls back. And come to rest. And now just to get balance again, we'll do a pelvic lift where you press both feet on the table, move your knees out over your feet, letting your pelvic floor thighs stay relaxed and the abdominals. Lift up the tailbone into sacrum, L5, L4, on up to at least L1 and maybe T12 and T11. Now you can do the arm motions both at the same time if you're good at doing one at a time where you slide your arms down the table without contracting the back. Move the elbows out two inches, in about two inches without rotating the upper arm bone, and then out two inches. And now lengthen your neck out of that vertebra that's on the ground, and slowly lower your vertebra one at a time. You'll find the L5 and then the sacrum and tailbone gets to rest toward the table.